Hello there and welcome to the Card Grotto. Today I've got a haul to share with you. These are items that I purchased mainly in the month of July but also a few at the end of June and also two that I'd set aside to share in a haul video and completely forgot to a couple of months ago. So I thought I'd share them as well. So first of all I made a small order from Dice to Die For and I picked up the sentiment strips from Mama Elephant. I have used sentiment strips for quite some time the little sentiment dies and I really really do like them I've got a few different sets from Simon's stamp and also from MFT but I use them a lot and I thought I would pick up these ones from Mama Elephant as well I'm assuming that they fit their sentiments quite nicely and I do have a lot of their sets so I thought that they would just coordinate coordinate quite well I like that they're all the same height but they're obviously different widths I mean obviously you can cut them down if the die is bigger than your sentiment anyway but it's just quite nice to have the variety and they were also a pretty good price point as well and then also from Dice to Die For, I picked up this little set here. This is the Sunny Studio Just Because set. I just thought it was so, so cute. I love these cute little bees and then the beehive there. You've got the little trails there for the bees as well and the two sentiments. I just thought it was a really cute little sweet set and I did pick up the coordinating dies to go with them as well. And then to go along with that set I thought this would work quite well as well this is the W plus nine this is their clear stackers hexagon dies I picked these up from Seven Hills Crafts I don't know why but I've put off buying hexagon dies for absolutely ages I have no idea why because I really like them for some reason I didn't buy them so eventually I decided to pick some up obviously as you can see I have cut them apart and used them already I apologize for that it's a little bit difficult to see them but they do range from fairly quite small to really large which is really nice so you've got quite a good different size range and they are a pretty good price point for that you know that range of sizes which is nice W plus nine do I think have really quite good prices on all of their sets and so I really enjoyed using them. I th think that they work quite nicely as windows. I used them as windows on a card for my Clearly Besotted release card back in, at the end, for the July release, so at the end of June. And I really liked them for the windows, but I thought that they would work quite nicely with that B set as well with the little hexagons. Next up, I picked up a pad of Arteza watercolour paper. Actually, this comes as a pack pack of two these are nine by 12 inches and they are 140 pound or 300 gsm watercolor paper i have been doing a collaboration with arteza and they've kindly sent me some of their products and they sent me a pad of their mixed media paper and honestly i wasn't that keen on it personally that's just personal preference so I wanted to try their watercolor paper and so i purchased this from their uk site this is their premium paper. Premium is kind of like their student line, whereas Expert is more of their professional line. But this is really nice paper, even though it's they class it as more of a student grade paper. It is really nice. There's a really nice texture to it. The price point is pretty good. The downside, personally, I found is that you have to buy the, them in packs of two because their prices are really good. They don't like selling things um, separately like their packs of cardstock and paper and things like that. So, I mean, you get a lot here. I don't really need two whole packs of this, but that was just the way it was that I had to buy it. So... Um, but I'm actually, like I said, really happy with the paper. I did use it with their real brush pens, the Arteza real brush pens. And I shared a video with that. If you haven't already seen it, I can link to that at the end if you wanted to watch it. It's really nice, got a really nice texture to the paper. It's not massively cream in colour. It's fairly white. It is still off-white. Most watercolour papers are. But I really like this and I'm looking forward to using that again. I also picked up the Tonic Studios Craft Perfect Glossy Black High Gloss Cardstock. I picked this up from Craft Stash. And the reason I wanted to buy it was because I saw Amy Ricevy use it in a video and she cut out the eyes of critters and their noses, whatever she would 
cut out with black cardstock and then you add glossy accents to it to make it glossy. She used this cardstock and I thought it was a really great idea. It kind of just cuts out the time of waiting for the glossy accents to dry. And so I wanted to pick some up as well and I'm probably going to use it pretty much for the same reason. Anything that I want black that I would add gloss to it, I can probably cut a bit of time out and use the cardstock instead. These are the two items that I purchased a few months ago and then ended up forgetting that I'd, not forgetting that I purchased them, but forgetting to show them on a video. I'd bought this size of the Avery Owl Pout pouches. I bought them for a particular item and I didn't end up using it for that item to store it, unfortunately. Um, I found something else in the end, but I'm definitely still going to use them in my craft room. I have a few of these kind of storage pouches from Amazon, but I really like these Avery L ones because they've got the turquoise at the top. Um, I'm one of those kind of people that really like things to coordinate. My craft room is aqua, so I really like the aqua color there at the top. These are really sturdy, very good quality. I picked up that small size and then also this larger size here as well. And I picked those up from Bumbleberry Crafts here in the UK. Another tool kind of thing, I picked up the foil quill from We Are Memory Keepers. This is the magnetic mat that works with the foil quill. So the idea is that you stick this magnetic mat onto one of your craft mats. So in my case, I use the Cricut as an electronic die cutting machine. So whatever machine you use, you take the mat and then you stick it on this. And then it helps to stick the paper and the foil down onto it. So before this kind of was invented, you would have to stick down the foil with washi tape, but you can stick it down with magnets now and it sticks to the magnetic mat. So hopefully that will work out a little bit better than the washi tape. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. This is not gonna fit in the screen. This is the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat. I've had this for maybe about a month and a half now. I didn't buy it when it first came out purely because I really didn't think I needed another mat and to be honest with you I really don't need another mat. I've got the Tim Holtz media mat, I've got Ranger craft sheets, I've got tonic craft sheets. The difference with this one is that it's silicone and because it's silicone it's kind of grips to things so when you put your cardstock down on it if you're doing ink blending for example it kind of grips it so you don't it doesn't move around which is quite nice. The only thing with that is it kind of grips the brushes and things like that as well. So I do need to have a bit more of a play with it. I've used it a few times and I did really like it, but I don't think I got a smoother blend as using it with maybe like glass or the other craft sheets. But another really great plus point for this is that apparently it's really great for mirror stamping. So what you would do is you would actually stamp your image onto the mat. You would add your cardstock and then kind of press that down into the ink. And then when you lift it off, it will be the mirror image of the stamp. And if you've ever tried mirror stamping, it is a bit of a faff having like uh, you stamp onto a like a stamp, a clear stamp or a back of a stamp, and then you then stamp that onto the piece of cardstock. So I'm hoping that this might work a little bit better. I haven't tried it yet. I'm gonna try it soon, hopefully, but I have seen videos of it and it seems to work quite well. So if you have this mat and you've done mirror stamping with it, let me know if it works out nicely or not, but I am gonna give it a go and see you know, how I like it. The only downside for me, because it's silicone, I'm worried that dust is gonna be attracted to it. So I have left it in its original packaging and I'm kind of storing it in its original packaging. The only thing is, it is really quite a large uh, mat and the packaging is quite large as well. So again, if you have this mat, let me know how you store it. And then last but not least, this was a bit of an investment, but I picked up the Tailored Expressions Blender Brushes. This is a pack of 10, and I really like these because they're all colour coded. So the, as you can see, the, the handle itself, are the different colours, which is quite nice. Obviously with the other brushes you can, like with the black handles and things like that, I know a few different companies are coming out with them at the moment. Um, I think the stamp market, they have white handles, but you can obviously colour code them, the other ones yourself. Um, just 
either add some ribbon onto it or just maybe colour a dot or something like that to show the different colours. But because I don't have sets that are all one size, I didn't really want to do that with my other brushes. And so I really like that these are kind of colour coded for me. And one really great plus point for these brushes is that they have a white they have white bristles. I love my other brushes. I use them a lot. I've been using them quite a lot more than the Ranger blending tools, although I still really love the blending tools. Don't get me wrong. I use them quite a lot as well, but I do a lot of ink blending and I have been reaching for the brushes quite a lot. But the downside to the bristles, the like brown bristles, is that you can't always see the colour of the ink and a few times I've gone to pick up the brush that I thought was one colour and it ended up being another colour and so it's not the end of the world to contaminate your ink pad but it then you add that to your paper and it's a completely different colour and you've got to start again so that is quite nice with these ones. The only thing is because obviously like say for example there's one green I probably will still use the other ones in conjunction and have like one light green and one dark green I tend to when I'm ink blending have like maybe four shades of blue for example there's a nice it's nice on this set because you've got a dark blue and a light blue but obviously I'm still going to use the other brushes and I do really really like the other brushes that I have as well I have taken these out of the packaging and they are very soft and I do like that they're all one size which is quite nice. For me I find that the bigger the brush I get a better blend, a softer blend which is quite nice. So I'm not that keen on the smaller ones although they are obviously good for detail work and things like that. So I like that they're all one size and in this set you do get um, a black and a white and I think there might be a purple as well from what I can remember. Um, so I'm gonna, obviously now I've shared them, I can start using them. I wanted them to be nice and clean for the video. So I'm looking forward to trying these out. They are a bit of an investment because obviously you get 10 brushes in one go. And I actually really nearly didn't buy them. And then I, oh, I'm, I'm so bad. I just went, oh no, I just really, really want them. And like I said, I have been using brushes a lot. So they're not the cheapest here in the UK. But because you get 10 in one go, they, like I said, they are a bit more of an investment. But I'm really looking forward to using those. So links to everything that I shared will be in the description bar on YouTube and also over on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.